just what I mean You too, T, keep it clean You see my boy, he like got a made it Well, that's my homie, ain't that right engraving First question came from my guy Gareth. He said, Hey, Engraven, I just wanted to let you know how much I respect your morals. Uh, that was a great episode. Hope you and your family are doing really well. Love you, bro. Uh, I never miss an episode and uh, I always press the like button. God bless. I, I appreciate that uh, a lot, Gareth. Thank you. Um, Cause you I've gotten a lot. I remember a lot of your messages and I appreciate uh, you just supporting uh, like crazy over time i appreciate you being a patron uh, i appreciate um just how positive you are uh, and i appreciate your respect too um that that goes a long way with me uh because that's like we always say that's what it is at the end of the day at the beginning and the end of the day uh it's about respect so i appreciate you a lot man uh, he said my question is if we didn't go and get a dk metcalf uh, who do you really think we have a chance of getting um, mm, so what impact player uh, do the Ravens have a chance of getting? Now, are you speaking specifically of wide receivers? Uh, if you are, mm, it's tough. That's tough. Uh, God, it's funny because I start seeing the, the, the little Debo Samuel pictures start floating around. The ones of him and the Ravens jersey again. I know a lot of people have been talking about Scary Terry. Um, hmm. And with, with DK Metcalf, it's and you're saying if we don't get him, like I would, I would, y'all know I would love for the Ravens to get him. I don't expect them to do that, but because it's just not that's not them. That's not their element. They don't do that type of stuff uh, when it comes to the wide receivers. And I think, I think they're kind of scared. I think they're scared. Um, and, and I think when was the last time they really gave a wide receiver some significant money? And we were like, whoa. I think it was, um, it was, uh, uh the dude, um, uh, I think he used to play for the, Ryan Grant, Ryan Grant, remember that offseason, where they paid him so much money, and we were all like, what, Ew, what are y'all doing, and then they were like, oh, no, nah, I fell physical, well, I fell physical, and I, I just think Ravens are just really scared to to get out of that comfort zone when it comes to the paying like paying significant money to a wide receiver uh hollywood he was coming up i was thinking okay this could go oh, but no they traded him away um who else? and they they usually sign guys past their prime for cheap like sammy watkins uh seth roberts was still young but he was very cheap willie sneed was still young but he was also really cheap um there's Brian. I mean, we, we, we don't want to go down that list again, but last time they really paid a, a wide receiver before Ryan Grant was uh, Anquan Bolden, but Ryan Grant was after Anquan Bolden, and they were just, they were scarred. They tried to offer Dez money before they offered it to Crabtree, um, and they all actually offered Dez uh, more money than they offered Michael Crabtree, but Dez said, no, I ain't going there. Uh -uh. He said, I ain't going there. Um... And then they gave Michael Crabtree that three-year, $21 million deal, but it was really a one-year, like, six or seven million dollar deal. Um, but, yeah, I think they are very scared because I think they don't want to get burned. And then, of course, um, I know the, the emphasis in their offense is not put on wide receivers as much as it should be, in my opinion. Um, and this is not even a Greg Roman thing necessarily. This is more of a Ravens philosophy type of thing. Because, he, again, way before Greg Roman even stepped foot on a Ravens football field, there was a lack of emphasis placed on those wide receivers. Um, but something that does give me hope, uh, and that's whether they got a, a significant wide receiver or not. Hopefully they do. But something that gives me hope is, again, the coaching. The coaching. And I know we kind of go in the way left field with your question. I ain't forget about it. But something that gives me hope is, is, is the coaching staff. Because the reason I say that is because even though there has been a lack of emphasis put on the wide receivers, it seems as if with the coaching hires that they're trying to sort of shift and maybe put a more emphasis on uh, the wide receiver room. Now with Greg Roman, um, I do think this will be his last year. Whether he finishes the whole season, he doesn't finish the whole season, I think this will be the last year for Greg Roman, and then I think they move on. It just, it's, all, it's like all signs are pointing to that. All signs are pointing to that. 
Um, I hope he goes out there and has a phenomenal year because I mean the Ravens had a phenomenal year on offense, but I, it does seem like they are moving in a different direction. Uh, it seems like this may be James Urban's last year too. Reason I say that because they got the assistant QB coach. They got Greg Roman assistance again to a T. Martin and Keith Williams. Though for those guys, they specialize in the passing game, and they specialize in areas of Greg Roman's weakness. So it seems as if the Ravens could be trying to shift the philosophy, well, not shift it, but maybe add something to it. Hopefully, 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 hopefully. But we won't know. But again, back to your question, as far as like what impact player do the Ravens have a chance of getting? They honestly, they got a chance of getting whoever they want to. Or whoever's available, obviously. But they have what it takes to, to make something happen. They could give whatever up. Um, I think the, the bigger question is, would they want to? Would they be willing to? If it's a wide receiver, I think the answer would be no. I don't see it happening. Um, and, and because the, the only wide receivers that they have been linked to this offseason were guys that they could get for cheap. Jalen Rieger from the Eagles. He is not going to hardly cost you anything. He would, they, they would not have to give up significant draft capital for him. Jarvis Landry, who was a free agent. You ain't got to give nothing up for him. You ain't even got to give him a big deal. I think I forgot what the deal that he got with the Saints is like, I think one year, maybe like, what's it, six or seven? It was something cheap. But they, they wouldn't have had to give anything crazy for him. They wouldn't. So I just... I don't see them going to get somebody significant. I still see them getting somebody, but as far as a big time playmaker, a uh, big time guy like a an it guy, I, I just I just don't see it happening. But I mean, with the guys that they have, uh, I'm sure more emphasis will be put on them, um, and hopefully they could just they make the most out of it and they can make some stuff happen. Uh, but again, y'all y'all know how I feel about the whole the wide receiver thing. So anyway, um, he said, and what linebacker is poised to have a big year? Because um, I think we have to go and get one more. Now, are you talking about we need to go get one more inside or outside linebacker? Um, but as far as inside linebackers, Patrick Queen, all, all Patrick Queen got to do is just clean up some small stuff. Patrick Queen can be so good, man. He can be so good. He has, and I hate using this word because it's a very uh, Raven-esque type of word when it comes to certain players and whatnot, and a lot of players actually, but Patrick Queen has so much potential. He has so much potential, man. So much. Um, it's just, you just gotta fine tune a couple of little things here and there. Just. One of the biggest things, wrap up, wrap up tackling, wrap up. Cause a lot of times he'll do the arm tackle, try to go for like a big hit or something and somebody might like bounce off him, but wrap up tackling. If, if he cleans up the, ooh, if Patrick Queen just cleans up the tackling, man, this dude, that, that will ascend his game so much because he got the speed. The speed is there. This is his third year, so the game should slow down for him uh, a lot. A whole lot. Um, the blitzing is there. The blitzing linebacker is, is there. Um, when he, like, with his explosiveness, uh, we've we, we seen the plays where um, he'll explode through the line, of, shoot through the gap, and get to the ball carrier quick. Quick, whether it's the running back or even sometimes a quarterback. But he can break up a play, but then we've seen some plays where he'll be back there and, and the, the he'll do like an arm tackle, the, the running back will like bounce off of him or whatever. And it's like, oh man, he was right there. So the potential is right there. They just got to fine tune a couple of little things and then just get it out of him and then hit, ooh. So I would say Patrick Queen, for sure. Um, Josh Bynes being there, um, that should help him. That should help him be even more comfortable, be even more like settled. Uh, so that could be a just a, a beautiful thing. So I, I would go with, uh, with with Patrick Queen. Um, if you're talking outside linebacker, or if you're saying inside linebacker, we need to get one more. Um, they got who? Christian Welch. They got uh, I know I'm missing somebody too. I'm missing somebody. They got Malik Harrison. I mean, he's inside linebacker, but they said they're trying him outside. 
So we'll see how that goes. Um, but as far as outside linebackers, um, it's Dalen Hayes, Tyus Bowser, David Ajabo, who, who he'll probably start on uh, the... He'll probably start, they'll probably have him, they'll probably uh, make him pass through the active roster. They'll have, probably have him make him make the 53-man roster, but then put him on injury reserve so they can bring him back whenever. Because if they put him on the physically unable to perform list and he isn't ready after six weeks, then he can't come back at all. So what I expect them to do with Ajabo is have him make the, 50, make the 53 man roster, but then after that 53 man roster is set, put him on injury reserve so you can then bring him back. Uh, after it, it, You could bring him back after three weeks, but he's not gonna be uh, ready after three weeks. Well, who knows with the technology nowadays, but the expectation is not that he's back after three weeks. But with injury reserve, Again, you can bring him back whenever uh, after the first three weeks of the season. So you don't have to, it, don't, it doesn't have to be like the physically unable to perform list where he has to come back after six weeks. Injury reserve, if he's not ready by six weeks, that's fine. You can keep on waiting. So that puts less pressure on him to be ready and on them to get him ready. Um, so, uh, again, Justin Houston, it's expected that he's back. Um, wouldn't mind if they sign Jason Pierre Paul too. Uh, get greedy with it, man. Get greedy with it. They, they got. Well, he's not an outside linebacker. He's a D, and I was thinking of Brent Irving. So, yeah, that's what I would do. Anyway, he said, I really appreciate everything you do. Thanks for answering these questions, and hope you and your family are doing great. Hey, I appreciate that. Thank you for even sending them in, man. So, I, I appreciate that a lot. Thank you, as always. The next question came from my boy, uh, Flirt Nowinski. And this is probably going to be the last question to take us out. I know we went on a little bit before that previous question, and my boy, Flirt Nowinski, he be going in, man. But I, I appreciate you. I got a lot of love for you, man. We done had some good conversations about some Ravens football, man, and I appreciate you a lot, man. So I hope you're doing well, man. Anyway, he said, yo, what's good, bro? It's your boy Flirt Nowinski back again. Hope all is well with you and yours out there. Yeah, we're doing pretty good, man. I appreciate you. Uh, first and foremost, I want to say Bateman liked my comment and pinned it on his page. I was hyped. Okay, well, congratulations on that, man. He said, but time to get to business. So, I know it's been a lot of talk about bringing in a vet. It's either we all for it or we hate it. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of people on both sides of the fence, man. And I think it all depends on who we're talking about, too, because that can change the conversation. But anyway, uh, now I'm on the fence about that because it depends on who it is. I should have just I should have just read. I should have just read first. See, this is, I always get to talking before I read, and then they end up saying exactly what we said. We on the same page so far. But anyway, he said, uh, now I'm on the fence about that because it depends on who it is. Julio, no. Debo, as much as I love him, no. Because they are Jimmy Smiths on offense. Mm, what are you talking about being injured a lot. Uh, potential there, playmaking ability there, but always hurt. So, mm. DK, yes, hands down. Love it. Love it. We could end it right there. We could end the episode right there, but anyway. Uh, somebody nobody is talking about is Robbie Anderson. He doesn't want to be in Carolina. He's a big body burner, also just like DK Metcalf. Now, get this. That's not it, though. He's also from Florida. Hey! He's also from Florida. Okay, anyway. Uh, of course, people will get pushed down the depth chart, but I believe it is needed. Let's be real. Lamar won MVP with a hurt rookie, and Seth Roberts, no knock to Hollywood, hurt, or uh, Roberts, but yeah. Uh, what is your thoughts on pulling the trigger, trigger on Robbie Anderson? Robbie Anderson, it's funny because he's somebody, when he was a free agent a couple years ago, he's somebody that I wanted the Ravens to sign. Um, just to uh, that, that downfield deep threat, um, I felt like the vibe was there, uh, and it would have been there with him and Lamar. Uh, both on and off the field. Um, and I felt like he would have been a good addition, a good compliment uh, to Ravens team. I mean, he did. Uh, <laughs> he was out there asking for Lamar Jackson autographs. <laughs> but anyway, um, this is one that doesn't get talked about too often. Because it's something that kind of goes over my head. I remember uh, he did he did put it out there. Like... Like, if he, if he said he was just, I think he said either he was just playing or he missed construed his work. I forgot what he said. The the reason, really, the excuse was that he put it out there on Twitter that he was thinking about retiring. And I was like, mm, I, I don't believe you. Uh, but, and then how he, uh, he, said, he said no to Baker Mayfield on the Panthers. And he's like, man, but we. <laughs> like, think about it. If you Robbie Anderson, man. And you you thinking about stuff and you think like man 
Panthers or Ravens? I mean, if you're from North or South Carolina, okay, but he's from Florida. So, yeah, I think it would be like an easy decision. Um, but, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind Robbie Anderson, man. I, I wouldn't. And that's something, someone that gets uh, overlooked. Um, but, yeah, I, I would, my first choice would still be DK Metcalf, though. He would be my first choice. I wouldn't be mad at a Debo Samuel, but, yeah, for the reasons that you mentioned, I would be a little bit worried when it came to injuries and stuff. Julio, um, I feel like the expectation would be that he wouldn't even play the full season. He'd be like a reserve kind of guy. But anyway, uh, he said, of course, people will get pushed down the depth chart, but I believe it is needed. He, oh, oh, yeah, I read that part. Um, he said, also, it bring me to my next statement. All right. Uh, so my big thing was getting an offensive line for Lamar. Uh, Mandrews is elite. Don't get me wrong. But people always say, oh, that's Lamar's favorite target, blah, blah, blah. But when Snoop came in, things didn't change. I know a lot of it is the, by design, but a lot is about time uh, them snapping the ball and having to run in a couple of milliseconds because of the line leaves them no choice but to throw to the closest person. LOL. Hence, Mark Andrews volume. But with this new offensive line that we have, that, that we have this will open up a lot for the offense. Uh, plays under center. I mean, I hope. I hope. I hope. But anyway, uh, he said plays under center, bootleg, shot plays, etc. I expect Ravens offense to be wide open this season. What do you think? This is where things get tricky. Um, because, like we talked about in the previous question, it seems more emphasis may be placed on the passing game. We just got to see. Um, but it, it depends on how much of a voice uh, Greg Roman, not only Greg Roman, but John Harbaugh, um, allows T. Martin and Keith Williams to have. And um, is it Adrian Dixon or Kerry Dixon? I think it's Kerry Dixon. Um, it just depends on how much of a voice he allows them to have. Uh, well, you, actually, John Harbaugh, he just let offensive coordinators do their thing. He let defensive coordinators do their thing. He'll step in sometimes now, but he usually pretty much lets them, all right, y'all got it, y'all handle it. So I guess it really depends on um, what their philosophy is going to be. So that's on Harbaugh uh, and really Bashadi too. Um, but that's on that's on Harbaugh, uh, and yeah, what they gonna just allow their guys to do? Are they gonna just be ground and pound, ground and pound, ground and pound, or are they gonna just want to open it up more? And I think they should open it up more because the more you can do, the more options you have. Uh, if you just so focus on the run, 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 and we know they're gonna run a ball, but if there's just a lack of emphasis put on other areas of the offense, then there's gonna be a lack of production with other areas of the offense, especially when your primary focus it ends up being stopped. Because there are going to be some games where they won't be able to run a the ball. There are going to be games like that. Um, but so you need to be able to do other things. You need to have other ways that you can operate. We, we've known already, even before last year, we've known Lamar can throw the ball. Let him. Let that man throw that ball, man. He always said that he said he wants to pass the ball. He said he don't want to be running himself. So let that man throw the ball, man. Anyway, um... He said, it's kind of weird when you look at it, uh, though. He said, Allen, Josh Allen, got Diggs and Davis. Uh, Kyler, he got D-Hop, Moore, or Rondell Moore, A.J. Green, and now Hollywood. They love all receivers. Shout out to uh, Antoine Wesley. <laughs> right, man. Uh, Pat Mahomes, uh, Tyreek Hill, he, he's going to miss him. Uh, Travis Kelsey, McCole Hardman. I keep forgetting about McCole Hardman. I always forget about him. Um... And we'll, we'll see how his new guys do, too. He got, um, not Sky Moore. What's, what's his other receiver's name? Maybe it is Sky Moore. And then the, then the guy who I wanted the Ravens to get. Uh, man, I can't forget his name, but he had the neck injuries. Uh, I cannot think. Undrafted rookie. Um, I cannot think of his name right now, but he, he was nice. So hopefully he can stay healthy and he can do his thing. Um, Josh Herbert, Keenan Allen, uh, Mike Williams. Um, I took Allen to get all this to it, it took Allen to get all this to do okay. A lot of volume. Oh, no, Allen's Allen, nice, man. I, I wouldn't say Josh Allen is okay. I, Josh Allen is nice, man. That, that, that dude is nice, man. But, yeah, they, they gave him. They were like, here. They were like, well, get up. In the beginning, they were like, oh, yeah, you're okay, but uh, here you go. Let, let's really see. And that boy is nice, man. I know a lot of Ravens fans don't like to give him credit simply because of, I, I think it's because it always seems like media try to put him and Lamar against each other. Like, who's better? Who's this? Who's that? Josh Allen is nice, though. No, Lamar is nice, but Josh Allen is also nice. Uh, but anyway, 
Um, he said it, it took Josh Allen to get all this to do okay, a lot of volume. Kyla has all that and extremely high volume to underachieve. We know Patrick Mahomes and his volume, LOL. Also, <laughs> Justin Herbert uh, and his volume just to not make the playoffs. Oof, 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 yikes. Uh, then you look at Lamar with the lack of a proven guy and look at the success. It makes you uh, think like, uh, forget them draft picks, LOL. If we can do this with them, imagine what we can do with a DK, Robbie Anderson, etc. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That, that's, ah, oh, thank you. Mm. Thank you. Thank you so much. Because I, I, I get frustrated when I, I, I always hear settling. Like, people be like, all right, well, Lamar got the offensive line, so he should be fine now. Remember what he did his MVP season? Look at the receivers that he had, and look what he did. He should be fine now he got, since he got an offensive line. And I'm like, yeah, he got an offensive line. Why can't he get more? Like, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, last but not least, everybody wants to put Lamar down for the lack of playoff success. An example, boost Burrow up for theirs, but something they don't talk about in both cases is the defense. Bengals defense did what they needed to do. Lamar losses, our defense not so much. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. Because um, the defense, they, they, were, they were doing their thing uh, against the Bills. They were holding it down. Um, against the Titans, early on they were giving it up. But after, as the game went on, they got a lot better. Um, the Titans game, mm, it was like, oh, yeah. It, the turnovers that the Ravens got didn't help at all. And then I think that put defense in some bad situations. The Ravens get going for it on fourth down. They would have dropped the interceptions. There was all type of stuff. Um, but anyway, he said, I'm kind of scared. We, we let a lot of talent go in the defensive backfield, but I also do believe in these rookies. They can get the job done. Do you think our defense is ready for that playoff push? If they say healthy, yes, for sure. I, I do think so. Um, and I think, again, I, I mean, I've been saying this for a long time. If the, the Ravens defense is healthy, they'll be just fine. I don't care what anybody says, but Wink putting Westry and uh, Anthony Averitt on islands made them men. You could see their progression all season. That was much needed. As you know, I wasn't a fan of getting rid of Wink after the amazing job he did with his practice squad teams. Uh, but, hey, we all can't have it. We all can't have it always. Just like the Bengals will be once they actually play top talent this year and miss the playoffs. I'm out. Love it. Love it. Love it. Um, love it. That was, that was a fun one. And I, I knew it was going to be as soon as I saw the name, who it was from. I say, oh yeah, we we in for it, right? I appreciate you, my friend. Shout out to Graven.